Good morning, everyone. Today I'm here at Oakwood Cemetery, as I usually am most of the time. But today I want to talk a little bit about a uh, about a topic that I've been thinking about for the past couple of days after uh, after rewatching a particular video by a particular YouTuber, which I'll be talking about here. Namely, I'm referring to, of course, Alton Shea in his video. You're probably wrong about the Confederate monuments now. A part of the reason why this video has troubled me is largely not because of the content itself, because I can't even get through the video to watch the content. The issue is how he opens up with effectively, as I like to say, a defamatory manner, you know, just straight up flipping off some of the different Confederate, some of the different Confederate monuments and the remains of those monuments that were in New Orleans during the time around 2018 2019 if i recall correctly now what troubles me so deeply about this is the fact is the fact of his just not only his behavior but what a lot of these confederate monuments represent because from what i know about about the video his entire argumentation which from what I recall from some of the other people who've watched this video and covered this video and covered it, which I'll make sure I link those in the description below, is effectively he covers the different monuments and about how common they are, blah 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 blah, and how a lot of them just pander to the lost cause narrative, which isn't really a compelling argument for what he does at the beginning of the video, at least for me. And there is a simple reason as to why that's the case. So first, I've talked about the main monument here at Oakwood Cemetery before, and that is this large, tall obelisk that you see in front of you right now, which goes all the way up, I'd say about 15, 20 feet at least. So it's a decent sized obelisk, one of the largest in this entire cemetery for the lack of a better term. But it's important to remember, but the reason why I take such deep disdain for his behavior comes down to what you see right here on this epitaph. This monument in particular, as you can see in the epitaph here, is it is dedicated to the 16,000 Confederate dead that are buried here at Oakwood Cemetery. This is also a Confederate monument. However, it should be also added to it that it is a memorial. However, this isn't just the only one like this. Oakwood Cemetery, as I've discussed before in a couple of other videos I've done, has more of these Confederate monuments. For example, we'll be going up towards the uh, speaking platform that you see in the distance, which kind of looks like a gazebo, and originally I called it a gazebo once or twice, but it's a speaking platform. That was built long after the initial monument was built in the cemetery. However, my main issue with that entire video is just his general behavior and how he uses this sort of, as I would like to say, double speak. Effectively, he does one thing, flipping off the monuments, but then he goes ahead and essentially backtracks and says, oh, well, I mean, like, you might have an opinion that you know, might be wrong in his view. It's wrong. However... I still respect that. However, that doesn't convince me. In particular, because if you respected the other the opposition's opinions and beliefs, you would also respect their the monuments themselves, at least to some extent, and not do what you've done. So as we walk through here, I want you to take a moment just to look around as I keep on making my way up here and just reflect as we pass by all of these markers. These are all plot markers that were built in the sometime in the uh, early 20th century, if I recall correctly, by the Ladies Association for uh, Oakwood Cemetery, 
which also built the main Confederate monument that we had seen earlier. These were all erected to act as, as markers for all of the men that were buried here, both known and unknown burials. So I'm just going to remain quiet for a minute or two. Just take a look, reflect on why these monuments were made. It keeps on going on and on. Thousands of dead buried here in this one location. You can now appreciate as to why they wanted these men to be memorialized. Thousands of men, many of them who don't have markers anymore, many of the original markers rotted away and are gone, who now have these unmarked graves. And many of these men are also unknown. We don't know who they were. And we most likely will never know who they were. There's been plenty of efforts to try to identify as many men as possible, but in the end, sometimes you can't find the records for it, and we don't know who they are. And it's because of this, because of these rows upon rows of men who've fallen in this terrible war, that we have these monuments in the first place. And it's important to remember that Though a lot of talk about, oh, well, all these Confederate monuments represent the lost cause narrative as if it's a, as a, bo as a boogeyman sort of scare method, they often ignore the obvious fact right in front of them. As we make our way over here to the gazebo, you still see more and more, and it keeps on going and going. It's well over, it is seven acres of fallen men who fell during this terrible war, who were largely confined to the hospitals, who had been wounded, grievous wounds, suffering from disease of all types, would eventually go on and pass away and then be buried here in the cemetery. And as we approach the uh, speaking platform, there's actually a couple of epitaphs that were placed up here as well. Particularly this one of note, which was erected actually fairly recently, 2021, as you can see on the uh, epitaph itself. This details all of the men who were, who are underneath of this speaking platform. And there are men who are still buried here underneath of this very platform. They still lie here in repose for all eternity. Which is why you ought to respect these things, even if you don't necessarily agree with some of the messages that can be written on there. And here's the uh, epitaph that's on the speaking platform itself, which is... Uh, <laughs> which I'll read it for you for brevity if you can't read it as easily as I can in it this moment. <clears throat> this memorial commemorates Oakwood Cemetery's Confederate dead who gave all they had in defense of their state and country and rest within this hallowed ground. And below it is the somewhat famous quote by Jefferson Davis, which I'll read here. The principles for which we contend is bound to reassert itself, though it may be at another time in another form. Now this can be extrapolated to be a part of the lost cause narrative, but it also exists and is also used because it is appropriate for what you see around you. For these women, for the men who had survived the war and gone through all these terrible things, 
They made these monuments because of what you see before you. To them, the Lost Cause wasn't a narrative. That's just how they saw the war. And that's how they believed it. Whether you agree with that or not is up to you. However, it's not right for us to judge what they believed in. And it's certainly not right to go about and desecrate monuments and act, as I would best describe it, in a degenerative fashion. Show respect even to your enemies, especially after death. For you never know when your time comes. But most important of all, ask yourself this. How would you wish to be treated after death? Would you wish to be treated as a contempted person, as someone who's hated and maligned, whose grave is desecrated and treated horribly, whose name is spoken in terrible ways? Or would you wish to be remembered for the virtues you had? Granted, you'll still be flawed. We are all flawed. But in the end, what we ought to remember most is what we did right. So that those who live past us and beyond us can then come to realize what to do, what is right, what to do right. I hope everyone has had a wonderful day. And if anyone has any sort of comments or anything else that they wish to bring up about this topic, feel free to, you know, mention it in the comments. I'll try to respond to as many as I can. To those who might have any sort of general sentiments against what I have to say, that's fine too. I'll respond to them likewise. So I'll respond in a respectful, kind manner. Because that's how I wish I would be treated. So, if, I hope everyone has a wonderful day, and may God bless all of you.